opportunity. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you today about box joints, which uh, is your box joints. A lot of you didn't know what box joints were. I think Chris and Michaela were like the only closest answers to what a box joint really is. And to show you uh, how strong they actually are, I'll stand on this. You can see it's not going to break unless you really try to beat on it with a sledgehammer or something like that, you'll break it. But to start you out, I'm going to only do one joint today because I obviously don't have enough to do four. But I've already pre cut this. So, what you do when you start out your joints is you're going to find out. Standards are usually an inch uh, an inch wide, and then whatever the thickness of your wood is, which this is three quarters, you do the depth so that is a nice even fit. But when you do this, you're just gonna mark each inch. Obviously, there's going to be a little over because I don't have the right uh, size dimensions of wood, but it really doesn't matter. If you're doing anything, unless it's going to be really fancy, you really don't need to worry about it. Then you mark your three quarters of an inch in. Go back in with your square. Okay. You mark each of the fingers, and that's what these are called. They really don't have a name for the inside of it, but mainly the finger name came around from what I understand from Mr. Rue, which all of you know. The thinner you get them, the more they look like little fingers interlocking. And that's what gives them their strength. And then what I always like to do is you always want to start with the outside end. It's going to be always left in. But I like to color what you're cutting out. So then you're left with all of these on the inside. And you come over here to the bandsaw. I was thinking Before you use the bandsaw, you gotta make sure your it is adjusted correctly. You really don't want it to be too high so you don't put your fingers in there. Which I've had experience with fingers through machines. And then you just gotta make sure the blade's gonna work properly.
this is a little rough, but you can take sandpaper if you want to and run that through there just to make it smooth and tight. And you just keep cutting away, just like that, on each of these. And you'll end up with things like I have over here. Take these, you line it up with your board because this is going to be back at a 45 degree angle. And take that, 